So we have Frank Loge coming back to talk about the Center for Water, Energy, and Efficiency's um, entry into the Data Innovation Challenge. They were runner-up, and he's going to give an overview of what the analysis did and what some of the discussions that have happened as a result of the analysis. Um, so, so I, I'm going to talk down here. I'm going to talk down here because it's an, it's not a PowerPoint presentation. It's actually an interactive um, application that we built. So I need to sit in front of a computer operated. So I'll talk in the microphone and then stand back up here if you have any questions. <clears throat> so we competed in the the recent data challenge and. Um, and so I'm the director of a center on the UCD campus called the Center for Water Energy Efficiency. And, and we've been around in existence for about the last five years. We're really interested in helping kind of drive innovation and thought leadership related to the water energy nexus. There's two halves to that. So there's the energy that goes in the water systems and the water that goes into energy systems. And so uh, much of our work to date really has focused on just half of that equation, which is the energy that goes into water systems. Um, so I presented a little bit of that earlier today um, as part of my keynote talk. Um, and I'd like to present to you today, or right now, um, a, a, an interactive application that we build as part of this data challenge. So we um, came in second place, I think in part because we didn't focus as much on the, um, the data that was put up online from the water board, but we did use all publicly available data. Um, so I'd like to kind of work through this interactive application and show you some of the results that we got from that. So, um, so let me start over here. Um, so there's a, and, and so this is available through, here's the website, so it's available. We actually have our source code that's running this available as well, so people can see how we built this. We used a program called Shiny Apps that interfaces with a, uh, with a programming language called R. Um, R in turn um, then interfaces with a database where we put all the data that we pulled off the web that was publicly available. Um, so over here we have interactive tabs. So I'm gonna click on info, info and just scroll down here for a second and just highlight a couple things. So this is right, listed right here are all the different data sets that we pulled together in order to put this application together. So I'll just let you read through this quickly, but um, I'll just highlight a few things. So the primary data sets that we used to build this application, I mean, these are all the data sets, but the first one was the water conservation reporting that took place in 2015. Uh, and the base year is 2013. Um, so each of the water agencies reported monthly on, their, on, on how uh, effective they were at hitting their water conservation targets. Um, the results I'll show you are specific to um, water utilities. So the results encompass all the publicly owned water utilities in the state of California, um, and they're all geo-referenced. So we pulled um, the district boundaries from this site um, we do look at um, both the water savings as well as the associated energy savings so, and the greenhouse gas emission reductions. So we pulled some data to quantify um, greenhouse gas emission reductions and energy. Um, we did, in, you know, in an attempt to be more true to what the competition was about, we did pull some water quality data um, from this source right here, and I'll show you that here in a second. Um, and then finally, um, our primary source of of um, energy came from the California Public Utility Commissions through their water energy calculator that Navigant put together. Um, and, it's, it's, and that's publicly available now on the CPUC website. So we scroll back up here. Um, so I'm gonna work backwards. So, so this is the water quality portal that we put together. Um, and our primary purpose here was, is, was to create a portal where um, people within a certain community could come in and easily access information related to um, both their drinking water system as well as their wastewater system. So this is a, a click down or scroll down list where you can scroll down. I live in the city of da Davis, um, so I can scroll down to my particular city. Um, it's way down here on the list. Oops. Um, and I can click here. Running really slow. Yep. Um, and so this is just a summary of the results that, that we got from, 
um, some of the publicly available water quality data so I can see um, the number of violations, what they were in violations for, and the percent that was greater than the RPH limit. And then we can also look at, you know, different wastewater violations. And if we had more time, we could have drilled down into this further. But that was our attempt at, at beginning to summarize and make more easily accessible the data related to water quality. Our true interest, though, um, was in um, the water energy nexus. And so this is the, this is the last portion of our application that I'll show you. Um, we both have a statewide view, which I'll get to in a second, and also a water utility view. So looking at the water utility view, um, so this is the city of Davis, and this is the geographic boundary of Davis. Um, and what we've reported he over here is the water use in millions of gallons in 2013, shown in black, and then in blue is um, the 2015 value, green is 2016. Um, and then if you, if you hover over this, you can actually see the specific values for 2013 and 2015. Um, so, um, so you can look to see how effective they were within each of these months of hitting their target. Their target was 20, 26, or I'm sorry, uh, th yeah, their goal was 28%. They actually got 26.3%, uh, so they missed the target by 1.7% um, over the reporting period. Um, we then used the, the energy intensity values as part of the uh, CPUC water energy calculator, the energy intensity values um, are expressed on a hydrologic zone scale, so that I think there's roughly eight hydrologic zones, 10 in the state of California. I showed that slide in my previous talk. Um, the energy intensity is the kilowatt hours per million gallons. So, you, so if you take the energy intensity for your particular hydrologic zone, you multiply it by the water savings, you can then translate the water savings into energy savings. So, um, so for Davis, this water savings translates into an energy savings of about a, a, um, a thousand megawatt hours of electricity saved for that reporting period. Um, to give you an idea of, of the significance of that, just from, a wa from an energy utility perspective, investor-owned uh, energy, investor energy utilities or investor-owned energy utilities um, have different types of rebate programs. So one of them is a calculated program where they will pay uh, roughly, and, and it changes from year to year, but they pay roughly 10 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity that's saved for a particular device that you might install or a particular thing that you might do. So, um, so for the city of Davis, the, uh, the investor-owned energy utility would be willing to pay about um, $100,000 for the energy saved through water conservation, and that's based on the actual water savings for for the city of Davis. I'm gonna give you also an estimate here for, for the statewide estimate that you, you can look at as well. Um, and then we use the, the, the energy mix for Pacific gas and electric to then translate this energy savings into greenhouse gas emission reduction. So you can now begin to make the linkage between water conservation, the associated energy conservation, and then ultimately the impact it has on greenhouse gas emission reductions. I'm always asked by at least a couple people, what is this energy savings actually associated with? So I'll, I'll, I'll preempt one of the questions that I anticipate when I'm done and say that this is, this is deferred energy or deferred energy use. So the way to think of this is this is the energy that the water utility would have used to provide the amount of water if water conservation was not in effect. So this is not energy that's saved by each of you in your homes associated with using less hot water or cold water. This I'm sorry, less hot water. This is the energy savings that the utility has not not actually used by not having to pump and treat as much water to get it to each of you at your households. Um, this water conservation is both indoor and outdoor as, as we all know, but likely most of this is outdoor water conservation. So that's the city of Davis. Um, just to show you a, a little bit more um, complex system, let me, let me scroll down here to the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power to show you what that looks like. So if I click on each of these, they would show you the actual results for each of the, um, for each, of the, for each of the different publicly owned water utilities. So this is the LADWP service territory. 
um, shown over here. I can scroll in and, or I can zoom in and out. I'm not going to do it because sometimes it goofs up and then I have to restart it. It's still quirky. We only had 20 days to put it together. Um, but again, if you, if you look at the results, you can see the, the water savings, um, which are shown in either blue or green, compared to the base year, which is 2013. The goal for the LADWP was a 16% water reduction. They missed their target by 0.3%. The energy savings associated with that um, water reduction was uh, roughly 61 um, 61,000 megawatt hours, and again, for LADWP is a PO or is a um, Department of Water and Power. They provide their own electricity. They don't get their electricity from Southern California Edison. But if they did, in concept, the energy IOU would be willing to pay um, about six million dollars for that energy um, saved. So it's it's not a lot of money, but it's still money that that could have been used to help offset the cost associated with water conservation. Um, with LADWP, and, and, and this is true to varying extents depending on the water utility, but with LADWP, um, they do report electricity and water, water savings as part, because they're a water and electricity provider. They report that to the state and other stakeholders. Um, they were super excited with these results because not only could they report water savings associated with their water conservation efforts and energy savings associated with their energy efficiency efforts, but they could also then claim savings of energy savings associated with their water conservation. So they actually bumped up their numbers of uh, uh, associated with their uh, energy efficiency programs for, for um, 2015. Um, so let me jump over to the statewide view, unless there's another city that anyone would like to look at. No? Let me j jump over to the statewide view. And I showed this as part of my um, keynote address, and I want to drill down on this a little bit more. But now we're looking at the results statewide. So we've got, we, we did this analysis for each individual water utility, um, and then we added up all the results, and we have this statewide view. So again, this is the same view as bef before for each of the different water utilities, but now we're looking at the statewide view. Um, and, and so statewide, we've essentially hit the target. We are off by about 1%. This is the associated um, energy savings. So statewide, in concept, the investor-owned energy utilities would have, you know, as part, of their, um, as part of their calculated energy efficiency programs, would have been willing to pay about $90 million for all the energy savings associated with water conservation. Um, and then the corresponding Greenhouse gas emission reductions that, would, that occurred because of that energy savings is about 219,000 um, metric tons of CO2. And that's equivalent to taking about 50,000 cars off the road. But, but when we got these results, we scratched our head and we said, we said you know, initially we said, you know, let's put this in the, term, the, in the context of carbon to see how significant these savings are. And, and so 219 metric tons, or, 219,000 metric tons, taking 50,000 cars off the road, uh, you know, that doesn't seem like it's very significant. So the other way we looked at this is we pulled some additional information off the California Public Utility Commission website, which is shown down here. And this is the energy savings associated with all the investor-owned energy efficiency programs. So this is the additive sum of all the energy savings associated with each of the investor-owned energy efficiency programs across all four investor-owned energy in, uh, all, across all four investor-owned energy utilities in the state of California. And so the colors reflect different, different efficiency programs, appliances, HVAC, indoor lighting, outdoor lighting, processes, refrigeration, whole building. So this is the additive sum uh, across all these different programs across all four utilities. And that additive sum for this quarter, July through September of 2015, was, was about 460 um, gigawatt hours of electricity that was saved through investments by these four energy utilities and energy efficiency programs. The energy savings associated with this amount of water reduction in the state of California was essentially the same. Um, so in, that, in those terms, the energy save through water conservation was quite significant. Um, now, I need to point out, and again, anticipate some of the questions that arise when we give this talk or when we have given this talk, the energy savings through these two different me mechanisms it is very different. So the investor-owned energy utilities tend to invest their energy efficiency dollars into fixed technologies that stay in place for many, many years, like a light bulb or um, an HVAC system. 
the energy savings that we're seeing here um, through water conservation largely are due to behavioral changes that we all made in response to the drought. And so with behavioral changes, the, 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 the downside is, is that when the drought ends, we could all change our behavior and that those energy savings would go away. So, so we are, in a sense, we're not comparing apples to oranges, but we are comparing two very different ways of achieving energy savings. I should also note that, that, that behavioral modification uh, in the energy world is a recognized mechanism, mechanism of saving energy. So like the best example is O-Power. It's a company that, that energy utilities will contract with that takes your, your, your um, energy bill and, will, and then will compile it and compare it to other people like you and then send a, send a flyer back to you saying, this is your energy use, this is how it compares to people like you, and here are some things you might want to change. Um, and that's, an, that's an entirely behavioral-based um, energy conservation. It is a recognized way of saving energy. Um, if I go over here and click on the next tab, this now is looking at the costs associated with those energy savings that we were just looking at. So to achieve roughly 460 gigawatt hours of, um, of energy savings through the investor-owned energy programs, that cost about $172.6 million. The cost associated with achieving the same energy savings through water conservation was about $44.8 million. These numbers, and again, I'm happy to talk about this in more detail um, with questions, but these numbers are coming from the California, California Public Utility Commission. There's a number of assumptions that went into generating that number that I'd be happy to talk about. This number here came from a um, report that was submitted to the State Water Board surrounding the drought where there was a big question about how, how much did it cost to actually achieve a 25% statewide water reduction. And this report said it cost anywhere from 50 to, 50 to $100 an acre foot, depending on the water um, utility and where they were located and the other things they did to hit those targets. So we used a, a average value of $75 an acre foot to translate the energy or the energy savings associated with water conservation into this number here. And the final way to look at this is if you just divide the cost by the energy savings, it costs about 38 cents a kilowatt hour to save uh, uh, electricity through investor-owned um, energy utility energy efficiency programs. It costs about 10 cents a kilowatt hour to save a, uh, to save a kilowatt hour um, of, it, of it electricity through water conservation. So the costs are greatly reduced. Um, but again, it's a different type of energy savings. This is behavioral-based energy savings. It could have a rebound effect once the drought ends. Um, and, and with the investor on energy efficiency programs, they, those, those are more hardened savings that, that last over time. The, the one thing before I end here that I just would like to comment on is, um, is I, I, I have paid attention to a lot of, of, of I can come up here and now talk. But I, I, I've tracked a lot of the, um, of the conversations that have occurred um, since the governor kind of issued the, this, this new um, executive order that, that is giving a lot more control back to the water utilities and coming up with their own conservation programs. Those are in the process of being formulated, submitted to the state water board. Um, but through that process, um, I get the sense, and again, I'm talking for myself and no one else, but I get the sense that a lot of water utilities are beginning to, to lessen the degree of conservation that they're going to implement statewide for varying reasons. And one of the things that I think this type of analysis helps illustrate, independent of how you, you value conservation and how you view water as a statewide resource or, or is it specifically a water utility resource and who has you know, the ultimate authority over um, saying how much people should conserve or what the water use efficiency targets should be, is that there is energy associated with water and by conserving water you are saving energy. So if you could begin to move in a direction of more hardening these behavioral based modifications, this truly is a very efficient way to save energy. But it really needs to be a hardened um, number and not something that's just strictly behavioral that can rebound once, these, once the drought ends and conservation targets um, lessen. So with that, I will conclude and I'd be happy to answer any questions.